In this video, we'll take a look at how we can create a simple enemy follow script here that'll move around and follow our player continuously. And it's really only one line of code. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, so today we're just going to look at a simple enemy AI in Unity 3D. And we're just going to be using the nav mesh components, which I think are still currently in beta, actually. But um, we're going to head over to the GitHub page here and check it out. So I'll leave a link in the description for this. but if you just Google Unity Nav Mesh Components GitHub, it'll be the first link. And you're just gonna wanna come over to here and download the zip. And then we're gonna come over inside of Unity. And here I just have a brand new project with an empty scene. And I'm just gonna drag in that Nav Mesh uh, folder that we just downloaded. And you're gonna give it a minute here and it's gonna import. Okay, so now that we have the Nav Mesh Components imported right here, uh, I think the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna right click and add a cube and this is going to act as our ground. So we're going to come over here and change the scale to something like uh, 0.1 and 10 and 10. So that looks good. And then I'm just going to create a quick material here so you can tell which is the ground. And that's fine, I just a ground, but uh, we'll just change the color to something like this, just for the demo. Okay, so now that we have a ground, we're going to drag in another 3D object. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this time we're going to put a capsule. And we'll drag him up out of the ground. And you can see he's already configured with a capsule collider here, which is that green outline. And a mesh render, which just gives him this look. So we'll close these for now. And I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to rename him to player. And I think uh, next what we need to do is just add a little script to give him player movement so that our enemy can actually follow us around. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna right click and create a C-sharp script. And I'm just gonna call it uh, player move. And then I'm gonna double click it to open it up in a text editor. I like using Visual Studio, but you can use whatever. And now inside of here, there's only a few things we need to do inside of the update method. And we're gonna create two variables. The first one's gonna be horizontal and that's going to be equal to input dot get access dot horizontal or er, uh, called horizontal and I'll show you in a minute where that comes from and then you might have guessed it the next one is called vertical and that's going to be input dot get access vertical now it's important that you spell uh, horizontal and vertical here just the way it is with a capital letter in the front and I'll show you um, where you can reference that in a second so next we just need a vector three variable and I'm gonna call it movement and that's gonna be equal to a new vector three. And we're gonna feed it horizontal, zero on the Y and for the Z we're gonna feed it the vertical. Like that. And then lastly we just need to update our position. So transform.position is gonna be plus equals movement times time dot delta time and I'm just going to come up here and create a public uh, float move speed and that's just going to be equal to something like let's just say 2.5 and then down here we just need to multiply by move speed so if we save the scripts and go into unity all right so now that it's done thinking we should have no uh, errors and we're just going to click on our player and we're going to drag and drop that script over here. So now the player move script is on our player and I'm going to next just drag up our camera a bit and maybe rotate it on the X just so we can get a better view. And I'm going to hit play and then you'll be able to see that our player has movement. So there you go. You can move around with the arrow keys or uh, A, S, W and D. And these variables right here, these horizontal and vertical, they just come from um, up under the input settings. So you go to edit, project settings, and input. And by default, Unity has uh, 18 different ones created for us. And you can see horizontal is right here. And that just is left and right arrows. And vertical is up and down and S and W. So that's where those come from. Okay, so next we're going to go 3D object and cube, and we're going to slide him over to here, and slide him over to here, and just drag him out of the ground, and we'll recall him enemy, 
Now we need to add a component and we're going to add a nav mesh agent. And when we do that here, you can see it adds um, almost like some a sort of collider. It's a cylinder collider with like a box collider type thing around it. Um, but the nav mesh agent is a cylinder one here in the middle. And that just is essentially what tells um, the code what to rotate around or the pivot point. So now that we have that, we can create a script for our enemy. So we're going to right create, right click and create a script and we're going to call it enemy follow. I guess a better name would have been player follow, but either way, we're going to double click it. And up at the top here, we just need to use unity engine dot AI. And that will give us access to those nav mesh components here in a second. So now just under the update method, we can say something like game object dot get component. And we're looking for the nav mesh agent. Then we're going to say dot set destination. Okay, so what this does is um, it's taking our game object that the script is sitting on. So it's going to obviously be our enemy. So enemy and it's getting a component of our enemy and it's going to be that nav mesh agent that we just gave it and then it's going to set its destination to some position inside of the world so obviously the position that we want to set it is our player so i'm going to just create a game object variable up here for the player called the player and down in here inside of set destination we're going to say the player dot transform dot position just like that and we can save it and go back into Unity. And the last thing we need to do is we're just going to create an empty game object. And you can call it whatever. I'm just going to call it nav mesh. And we're going to add a component to it. And it's going to be a nav mesh surface. So we're going to click on that. And I'm going to zoom out here so you can see what this does. So if we just go over here and click Bake, you can see it draws um, this uh, kind of bluish rectangle around us. And that shows us the areas on our map or on our surfaces that are walkable. <clears throat> so currently, our player isn't walkable here, which is why there's no blue mark around him. And if you can see here, there's a border around um, the cube on the ground here that's also not walkable. And that's because our radius here is set to 0.5. So if we would go into agent settings and if we would change radius to something like 0.25 and we go back into our inspector and click bake, you can see now that we got a little bit closer here to the edges. So you just have to play around with that. Um, for most most things, you probably wouldn't need to get to the exact edge because you're probably going to have some sort of obstacle here anyway. But um, I guess I can just show you if we drag in another object here. And if we just set this to 2, and if this is going to act sort of as like a barrier, we can make sure we're on our object, and we can go to the navigation inspector and click on object and so we have to make sure we set it to static and then we can change if it's walkable not walkable and jump and obviously we don't want it to be walkable so we're going to change not walkable go back into our inspector click on our nav mesh and then just rebake and there you go you can see that it automatically cuts out um, the area on the map here with that given radius <clears throat> and you can play around here with other settings so for example um, the height, the step height, and the max slope. The max slope here, you can see, it allows the object to go up steeper terrain. So if you want to bump it all the way to zero, you would just have to walk on a flat surface. Um, but I think, what was the default, 45? The step height is basically how high he can step over things. So 0.75, if we keep going up here, you can see it gets higher and higher. Um, but 0.75, that seems to be a pretty good default for most players. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Um, you can drag and drop anything you would like into here. And then as long as you make sure you set it to static either in here or you can just go to the inspector and make sure you check it to static. And you just go into rebake. You can add as many objects as you want and it'll automatically update the scene. So if I delete this for example, go back to our nav mesh and rebake, you can see that it's gone. And now if we run it, Actually, first off, we need to add this script. So, enemy follow, and then we also need to throw in our player. So, just drag in the player. And now, if we click run, you'll see that he'll follow us around. 
So we're moving around and it'll turn and keep moving with us. And uh, you might be wondering how do you change the speed of the player since we didn't really set that in code. And that's through the nav mesh agent. So if we click on enemy and we go to the nav mesh agent component, you can set its speed to whatever you'd like. Uh, by default, it's 3.5. So I'll bump it down to like two. Acceleration and angular speed. Angular speed is basically how much it'll turn or how fast it'll turn. Um, auto braking is, um, will it stop before it hits an object or will it only stop if it hits the object? Um, auto braking is pretty nice. I would leave that on. And the stopping distance here, you can set that to whatever, and that's just how close we'll get to the set destination. So right now it's set to zero, so he'll try to get into inside of.